everybody. Vivian here with an altered box that I made for a blog hop that is sponsored by Paper House Magazine. The blog hop is going on from March 1st to March 7th of 2013, so I hope you'll visit all the talented stops along the way. This was a box that my TV remote control came in, and I saw it and I immediately knew I wanted to alter it because it was a really sturdy corrugate box. And these are papers from brand new Prima lines um, that I just picked up at my local scrapbook shop. I snatched them up uh, from Scrapbook Island in San Jose, California. Um, so I cut all those pieces to size um, to cover all of the surfaces on the exterior of my box. The individual pieces of paper that I picked up were, were just gorgeous. Um, really lovely, delicate, luminous colors. Um, and they're double-sided paper, so it's actually really hard for me to choose which side to use. But I pretty much uh, chose a different pattern for each surface of the altered box. And I'm just Mod Podging it down. I chose a matte Mod Podge, but you could use whatever decoupage medium that you have on hand, or um, even a matte medium. I think I used matte medium on my last video for you guys. Once the Mod Podge is dry, um, it's nice to sand away or trim away any excess paper that may be hanging off or interfering with the ability to bend and fold at the creases. So I did that with a medium grit sanding block that I got from my local hardware store. I also picked up these tapes. That came, these two tapes came in a single package. It's a, a washi tape and more of a canvas-like tape, from also from Prima. Uh, I especially loved that canvas tape. Uh, that, that's what I'm adhering right now. So I'm um, adding that along all the edges. Um, I alternated between that canvas tape and the washi tape um, to give more of a feeling of like a cigar box. It's also a great neat way to sort of hide any rough edges or um, pieces of paper that didn't um, get cut perfectly. This is that pretty delicate peach washi tape that came in the package and I randomly chose edges to use either the washi tape or the canvas tape. And so let me close this up so you can see what it looks like so far. I think you could go in a couple different directions with this box. I debated between whites and creams and laces, doilies and pearls, um, and the other direction that I thought, which I ended up going in, which was to distress. Um, you could actually distress this heavily, but I did uh, a light bit of distressing with some Tim Holtz Distress Ink in tea dye. And um, then I embellished it up with some of the new uh, florals and other embellishments that have recently come out from, from Prima. So I did a little bit, uh, quite a bit of tea dye, and then a little bit of vintage photo as well. And those tapes really, especially the canvas tape, took that distressing in a really nice way. So I made a little mark and I used a We Are Memory Keepers, I believe this is called a Big Bite, um, to punch a hole in there. Um, I would have stuck a, an eyelet in there, uh, but I didn't have one, so I just made do. We moved to a new house and I haven't been able to get all the things that I need quite yet. Um, and then I also punched a hole on the other surface so that I could stick ribbons through each side. So that's shaving cream. Here we're getting to the fun mixed media technique portion of the video. Uh, I have a mixed media surface technique techniques book that I've had lying around for a really long time. And I just picked it up and I don't know if, how you guys read your books, but sometimes like with uh, manuals like that, I read them from back to front. Anyway, there's this really great technique for using um, shaving cream. 
and um, not shaving gel, shaving cream, and um, if, if possible, unscented. So you lay that on top of a plastic plate, and then you can just drop in acrylic paints, inks, watercolors, whatever. And um, I'm using some Lumiere paint. This one right here is a light body metallic acrylic, uh, a Lumiere paint by Jacquard in Citrine 542. I chose a collection of colors that mimicked some of the colors in these beautiful Prima papers, um, but also sort of um, intensified them a bit. So I used this light green. I also used a metallic bronze 565, which is sort of a medium bronzy metallic. So um, I, uh, I accidentally got a little of the green in there, so I had to sort of coax it back out. Um, so just drop that in in random patterns. And after the metallic bronze, I'm using a 543 burnt orange. After the burnt orange, I used 562 metallic olive green which is uh, quite a bit more intense than any of the greens that were in the papers, but I just wanted to sort of create a little bit of drama. Once those are all down, you could actually just leave them like that, um, but I chose to start mixing it up a little bit and marbling it with the um, shaving cream. And um, I wanted the, some of the greens to move where the the bronzes were and vice versa. So I moved it around a little bit. This part's pretty fun. And I think the reason you want unscented, I was not able to find unscented. The reason you want unscented is just sort of a preference thing because your craft room is gonna smell like shaving cream for a little while. <laughs> but I don't really notice the smell coming from the final, final project once it's all dry. So if I were working on a 100% flat surface, like a 12 by 12, creating my background, um, I think I would have done this differently. I would have pressed down pretty hard using my plastic plate. But because I had a lot of small areas, I decided just to press down lightly. And the shaving cream, sometimes hit or miss, gets through the holes in your stencil. This is a creative imagination stencil. Um, but I sort of moved it around with my finger, and this was pretty fun. Got to get a little bit messy. And I think the thinner the layer you lay down, the more it will um, break up into sort of a crackle effect once it's dry. This was a pretty thick layer. The cool thing about it is it dried and it's, it doesn't come off at all. I think if you were like to rub sandpaper on it or something, it would come off. But it's it's there. It's it's not really going anywhere. Um, I think if you were concerned, you could spray on some uh, fixative. Uh, but I, I didn't feel the need to do that. The shaving cream turned out to be a really great medium to get colors to mix together in a really natural organic fashion. Um, it really was very little work at all to create a, a nice natural blend of colors that you want to use on your project. FYI, the shaving cream technique and the use of it is the archival quality of it is good. Not excellent, but good. That's what it says in the book. Um, so I embellished it with a whole bunch of premium embellishments and I felt like it needed a little bit of softness so I handmade some little organza um, rosettes and I have a tutorial for those rosettes, a stepped out tutorial 
that I made for really reasonable ribbons. So I'll provide a link to that uh, in the description box for the video. So here is my altered remote control corrugate box. I love when I'm able to upcycle something so humble and make it into something special. Uh, the pretty much all of it is Prima, new Prima. There, the gems are Bow Bunny, and the fibers, the yellow organza, and the olive seam binding that I used to close the box, are both from Really Reasonable Ribbon. And um, the media that I used were a Lumiere paints from Jacquard and shaving cream. And here's a shot of the back. Laugh, cherish memories. Lots of um, sewing themed stuff in the papers that I got. I really love it. And here's a close-up of the paints mixed in with the shaving cream once everything was dry. So you get some a little bit of grittiness. It's not rough to touch at all, but it looks a little bit gritty. And you see what I'm talking about, about how the paint sort of mixes together in neat ways. So I'd love to see how you guys, um, what kinds of projects you guys come up with using shaving cream. I'm sure it's if you've got a man in the house, I'm sure it's readily available. But remember, shaving cream, not shaving gel. Here's a close-up of my cluster and my little yellow handmade rosettes. And if you haven't yet, please come on over to my blog, contadinak.wordpress.com, and subscribe to me over there. Um, like I said before, we have a blog hop going on. So I'll provide the link to that particular blog post. And you'll want to comment along the way because many folks involved in the hop are going to be giving away a rack, including me. So I'm, I'm going to put together a, a giveaway. So if you um, subscribe here or on my blog and leave a comment letting me know that you did subscribe, I will enter you into a drawing for my rack. Um, if you're already a subscriber, just hop on over to the blog and let me know. Okay, thanks a lot, and see you next time. Bye.